on World News Tonight. Flash floods. Monsoon rains slam northern India as floods and landslides displace residents across the region. NATO convenes. Heads of states arrive for the NATO summit as war in Ukraine and climate change are expected to dominate the agenda. More protests. Israelites take to the streets to showcase outrage over Netanyahu's proposed judicial overhaul. And lunar love. Sky lovers enjoy the exhibition of 3D artwork, Talking to the Moon. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News this Monday night. We begin as neighbouring India is being lashed with heavy rains causing extremely volatile situations such as landslides and flash floods, taking the lives of dozens unable to escape the chaos of Mother Nature. At least 15 people were killed in floods and landslides triggered by monsoon rains that battered northern India, with New Delhi receiving the most rainfall in decades. Roads in several parts of New Delhi were submerged in knee-deep water as it was inundated with 153 millimeters of rain, the highest precipitation in the single day in July in 40 years. Fifteen people have been killed in the past 24 hours in six northern Indian states. Hill states were the worst affected, leaving six dead in Himachal Pradesh alone where landslides blocked about 700 roads. India's meteorological department has forecast more rain across large parts of northern India in the coming days. Official data shows monsoon rays across the country in the first week of July have already produced about 2% more rainfall than normal. The summer monsoon brings South Asia 70 to 80% of its annual rainfall as well as death and destruction due to flooding and landslides. The rainfall is hard to forecast and varies considerably, but scientists say that climate change is making the monsoon stronger and more erratic. Now, the US, Britain, France and Germany are hoping to unveil a framework others can join at a NATO summit this week. US President Joe Biden has made clear that Ukraine is not ready for NATO membership, adding the war needs to end before the country can be considered for the military alliance. US President Joe Biden touched down in London on Sunday night ahead of this week's NATO summit in Lithuania. Biden is set to hold separate meetings Monday with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and King Charles, with discussions focused on Ukraine and climate change respectively. This is Biden's first visit to Downing Street as president and his fifth meeting with Sunak in as many months. The trip comes against the backdrop of Washington's recent decision to supply Ukraine with cluster bombs. The UK is one of 120 countries which has signed a convention banning their use due to their threat to civilian populations. Sunak and Biden are expected to share notes before the NATO summit, which starts on Tuesday and will be dominated by the war in Ukraine, as well as the country's bid to become a member of the Defence Alliance. In an interview aired Sunday, Biden appeared to throw cold water on the prospect of Ukraine joining any time soon, saying, quote, I don't think there is unanimity in NATO about whether or not to bring Ukraine into the NATO family now, at this moment, in the middle of a war. After Downing Street, Biden plans to hold talks with King Charles at Windsor Castle, where discussions are expected to centre around the climate crisis. Now over in Beijing, where US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has wrapped up her visit. Janet Yellen once again stressed that Washington does not want to decouple with China, saying it would be disastrous for both countries. But the US will continue to de-risk in trade. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen concluded her four-day visit to Beijing for high-level talks on Sunday as Washington seeks to stabilize relations with China after months of inflamed tensions. Relations between the two countries have been particularly frosty in recent times amid national security issues, including Taiwan, U.S. imposing export bans on advanced technologies, as well as the U.S.'s apparent rallying of advanced economies to counter China's economic coercion. But during her visit to Beijing, Yellen reiterated that the United States is not seeking to decouple from China. There is an important distinction between decoupling on the one hand and on the other hand, diversifying critical supply chains or taking targeted national security actions. 
She added that such a decoupling would be disastrous for both countries and destabilizing for the world, and that the world is big enough for both of the world's two largest economies to thrive. We want a dynamic and healthy global economy that is open, free, and fair, not one that is fragmented or forces countries to take sides. While a single visit is not enough to solve the challenges overnight, Yellen highlighted that the bilateral meetings served as a step forward in efforts to put the U.S.-China relationship on sure footing. The two countries remain at odds on numerous issues, and this trip did not result in any specific policy breakthroughs. But Yellen summarized her trip as successful in terms of re-establishing contact, saying she expected increased and more regular communications at a staff level. Such connections are expected to reduce the risk of misunderstanding and pave the way for cooperation in areas such as climate change and debt distress. Later this month, U.S. Climate Envoy John Kerry is scheduled to make a visit to China as the U.S. diplomatic push continues ahead of a possible meeting between the country's leaders at September's G20 summit in New Delhi or an APEC gathering scheduled for November in San Francisco. Six people, including three children, have been killed in a kindergarten stabbing in China's southeastern Guangdong province. Police said they have arrested a 25-year-old man with the surname Wu in Liangjiang town. The other victims are a teacher and two parents. One person is also injured. Police have called this a case of intentional assault but not elaborated on a possible motive. While violent crime is rare in China due to strict gun laws and tight security, incidents of stabbings at preschools over the past few years have raised concerns about school safety. China has faced a spate of mass stabbings in recent years, often targeting children. A 2020 knife attack at an elementary school injured 37 children in the southern Guangxi region, while a 2022 stabbing at a kindergarten killed three in eastern Jiangxi province. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu summoned his Attorney General to explain the police's handling of resurgent demonstrations against his plan to overhaul the justice system as the reform bill edges ahead. Critics argue that the bill would limit reasonableness as a standard of judicial review and would open the door for abuses of power. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu signaled impatience with resurgent demonstrations against his plan to overhaul the justice system. On Sunday, calling on his attorney general to attend a cabinet meeting for a grilling on police countermeasures to the protests. As the meeting began, Israeli media carried leaked quotes of some ministers calling for her to quit. Netanyahu said both opponents and supporters of the justice system reform have the right to demonstrate peacefully, but... While the government has not considered restricting this right, it is requested to receive a report on what is the enforcement policy regarding violations of the law that infringe on the basic rights of millions of citizens and which are carried out almost on a daily basis during the demonstrations. Street protests have flared and protesters plan to converge near Israel's main airport as parliament debates the bill on Monday. That's when Netanyahu's religious nationalist coalition is due to bring, for its first ratification reading, a bill that would limit reasonableness as a standard of judicial review. Critics say the bill's passage would open the door for abuses of power. But Netanyahu, who is on trial on graft charges he denies, says the aim is to restore balance among branches of government. Let's go for a short commercial break. You're watching World News. Welcome back. North Korea accused a U.S. spy aircraft of violating its airspace and condemned Washington's plans to deploy a nuclear missile submarine near the Korean peninsula. North Korea has accused the United States of flying spy planes over the country and threatened to shoot them down, quoted North Korea's Ministry of National Defense. The statement said that a plane flew into North Korean airspace, quote, dozens of kilometers over its East Sea several times, adding, quote, there is no guarantee that such a shocking accident as the downing of the U.S. Air Force strategic reconnaissance plane will not happen. South Korea's military said North Korea's claim of airspace violation was false. 
미국 공중 감시 정찰 US Air Surveillance Assets conduct routine reconnaissance flights around the Korean Peninsula and North Korea's claim of airspace violation is not true. We strongly urge the North to immediately stop creating tension with these false claims. The North Korean statement said the provocative military actions by the US were bringing the Korean Peninsula closer to a nuclear conflict. Last month, an American nuclear-powered cruise missile submarine made a port call at Busan in South Korea. That came amid air and navy drills being conducted by US and South Korean forces, also involving a US aircraft carrier and heavy bombers. Less than two weeks ago, North Korea held mass rallies in Pyongyang showing posters with missiles hitting the United States. Those mark the 73rd anniversary of the start of the Korean War. State-run television said people were heard shouting slogans, vowing a, quote, war of revenge. The rallies were held amid concerns Pyongyang could soon conduct another launch of its first military spy satellite to boost monitoring of U.S. military activities. That's after its first attempt ended in failure at the end of May. Now, the BBC has suspended the presenter at the centre of allegations of serious misconduct. The unnamed male host had allegedly paid more than £35,000 in exchange for explicit photos. Britain's BBC suspended a male member of staff on Sunday. It follows an allegation that one of its star presenters paid a teenager thousands of pounds to pose for sexually explicit photos, beginning when they were 17 years old. The broadcaster said it first became aware of a complaint in May, but new allegations of a different nature were made to it on Thursday, and it had informed, quote, external authorities. BBC News said it understood that referred to the police. In a statement, the BBC said, This is a complex and fast-moving set of circumstances, and the BBC is working as quickly as possible to establish the facts in order to properly inform appropriate next steps. We can also confirm a male member of staff has been suspended. The Sun newspaper, which first reported the allegations, cited the young person's mother as saying the unnamed male presenter had paid the teenager more than £35,000, that's US dollars over three years for the images. The mother told the newspaper that the teenager had used the cash to fund a crack cocaine habit. The family complained to the broadcaster on May 19th, but the presenter was not immediately taken off air, according to The Sun. Culture Secretary Lucy Fraser held urgent talks with the broadcaster's Director General Tim Davey earlier on Sunday about the allegations, which she described as, quote, deeply concerning. The United Nations warns that conflict-torn Sudan is on the brink of a full-scale civil war that could destabilize the entire region after an airstrike on a residential area killed around two dozen civilians. The Sudanese Minister of Health reported 22 dead and a large number of wounded among the civilians from what is described as an airstrike on Khartoum's sister city Omdurman in the district of Dar al Salam, which means House of Peace in Arabic. After nearly three months of war between Sudan's rival generals, the airstrike is the latest incident to provoke outrage. Around 3,000 people have been killed in the conflict. Survivors have reported a wave of sexual violence and witnesses have spoken of ethnically targeted killings. There have been widespread looting and the UN warned of possible crimes against humanity in the Darfur region. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned the airstrike in Omdurman, which he said reportedly killed at least 22 people and wounded dozens, his deputy spokesperson Farhan Haq said in a statement. Guterres remains deeply concerned that the ongoing war between the armed forces has pushed Sudan to the brink of a full-scale civil war, potentially destabilizing the entire region. The world's first robot-only press conference was held in Geneva on the sidelines of the United Nations AI for Good Global Summit in Geneva. Humanoid robots answered questions from journalists on the future of AI and their coexistence with humans. A press conference with a rather unnerving difference. Instead of world leaders taking to the podium, reporters were questioning nine humanoid robots. Sophia, the UN's first robot innovation ambassador, telling journalists she believes robots can lead better than humans. I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness than human leaders. 
These robots are some of the world's most advanced, many of which have recently been upgraded with the latest AI technology. Reporters were asked to speak slowly and clearly with any delays in responses put down to the internet connection. Dressed in a blue nurse's uniform, healthcare robot Grace was asked whether humanoid robots will steal people's jobs. I will be working alongside humans to provide assistance and support and will not be replacing any existing jobs. Amica, who's been designed for social interaction, denying robots like herself could one day spark a rebellion against their creators. I'm not sure why you would think that. My creator has been nothing but kind to me and I am very happy with my current situation. The UN's AI for Good Global Summit, held in Geneva, is designed to show how robots could help resolve some of the world's biggest challenges like disease and hunger. Just ask Desdemonda, the rock star robot singer. We can create a better future for everyone and I'm here to show you how. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Max Verstappen won the British Grand Prix to stretch his Formula 1 lead to 99 points as unbeaten Red Bull equaled McLaren's 1988 record run of 11 victories in a row. McLaren's Lando Norris finished second and seven times world champion Lewis Hamilton third for Mercedes. Germany for the first time plans to send troops to Australia to join drills with 30,000 service members from 12 other nations, underlining Berlin's increased focus on the Indo-Pacific amid rising tensions with China in the region. Torrential rain over southwest Japan triggered landslides that killed at least one person as authorities urged tens of thousands to leave their homes because of the danger of more landslides and floods. A fire smoked the underside of an Air Canada aeroplane and one ground vehicle at Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport. The ground vehicle caught fire under the plane and was contained within minutes with no injuries. Thousands of Haitians took to the streets of Port-au-Prince to call for an end to criminal gang violence and the humanitarian crisis that's been ravaging the Caribbean nation. The relief of Haiti March was called by a church pastor and also took place in Canada, the United States and France. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can always rewatch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Now we leave you tonight with sky lovers who were over the moon when they had the chance of lying under and walking around a 3D replica of the satellite in an exhibition in Chile. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.